Welcome to Syntax, a Generative Introduction, 4th edition. My name is Andrew Carney. I'm a professor of linguistics at the University of Arizona. I'm the author of your textbook, and I'll be leading you through this series of video tutorials. In the previous chapter, we talked about cases where X-bar theory failed and we needed an extra operation to get certain word order results. So in particular, in order to get VSO order, in order to get orders with adverbs and, and negations in French, we had to propose a rule of V to T raising. We also proposed a rule of T to C raising, which um, allowed us to understand subject to aux inversion in English and French. In this unit, we're going to look at a different kind of movement. This movement is movement of DPs rather than of heads into heads. Now, this movement is primarily motivated by issues having to do with theta theory. The phenomenon we're going to start with is called raising. Here's the um, basic idea underlying it. It seems to be the case that there is a restriction on where theta rolls can be applied. So theta rolls typically are applied locally, meaning within a particular structure within the tree. So take, for example, um, the verb leave. Leave requires an agent. You, know, you have to say Adrian left. You can't, you can't use an expletive, it left. It left, of course, is grammatical if it is um, not an expletive, but is uh, a pronoun. But what we see is that agent must be in the same clause as the verb that assigns it. So, for example, um, uh, Adrian left is fine. I think Adrian left is fine. Adrian is in that um, is within the same clause as the verb leave. But if you say something like "I want Bradley that left," that's terrible. Or John thinks that left, where John is meant to be uh, simultaneously the experiencer of think and the agent of leave. So in these sentences, there, there is an ungrammaticality that seems to be um, due to the fact that we have an argument that's not within the same clause as the verb that assigns it. So here's how we're going to encode that. We're going to write up a condition or constraint. Constraint is something like um, the theta criterion or the binding conditions or the extended projection principle called the locality condition on theta rolls. Essentially, the basic idea is that theta rolls are always assigned within the projection of the head that assigns them. So, for example, when you have a verb, that verb is going to assign the theta roll for the theme. So, that theme has to appear within the verb phrase. Similarly, agents are introduced by the null active head. So they're going to be assigned within the, um, the, the voice P that contains that null active head. Recall that this is where we proposed that subjects, uh, in particular agents, have to be generated for languages like Irish in order to get the VSO order. So here's our problem. That constraint seems to hold most generally, but there's a set of verbs where things go awry. Let's take the verb, John is likely to leave. If you think about it for a moment, John here is the structural subject of is likely, but it doesn't really get a theta role from is likely. Its theta role comes from leave. There, John isn't likely, right? John is going to be leaving. What's likely is John's leaving. So, um, and we actually see this, that there are varieties of this sentence where you can say things like, it is likely that John left, where it is um, an expletive, so getting a theta roll. So we actually have to uh, find a way for John to get its theta roll from leave, but end up as the surface subject of is likely. Now, notice that is likely allows two forms other than John is likely to leave. One is what we call the clausal subject construction, that John will leave is likely. Here we have in the subject position of is likely a clause. 
And the other is the expletive construction, which is sometimes called extraposition, although that's irrelevant to the uh, analysis at hand here, where that John will leave is in the complement position of his likely, and you get an expletive in the subject position. Both of these um, sentences are consistent with a theta grid where is likely assigns one theta role. Um, it's probably a theta role like proposition that goes to a CP that is not a question because we have the that here and it is finite. So it's not a, a non-finite clause. And this uh, this construction allows um, you to have this here or um, the, the clause in the complement position. Um, given this, right, leave is assigning a theta role to John, or more accurate, accurately, the um, null active head is, but we'll just abbreviate that here, and likely is assigning a theta role to the CP. Now what's going on? Um, with John is likely to leave. Here we have the th same uh, thematic properties. Um, leave seems to be assigning a theta role to John, but John is not in the same clause as leave. So we have to um, think about ways we can do this. One way is we have a rule of DP movement. And the DP John is moved from its theta position up into the subject position of that higher clause. So this tree is a little terrifying. Don't panic. It's, it's got all, all the things that are in it are things you've seen before. Um, this is the, strike li the structure for is likely. We have a TP, we have a verb phrase with the copular is, and we have the AP likely, which is you know, probably an adverb phrase or, or something like that. It doesn't matter. And is is going to undergo um, uh, V to T movement as auxiliaries in English often do when they're tensed. We know that this operation happens because um, this auxiliary will undergo subject to oxygen version to C in a question context. The complement to is likely is another clause. This clause is a minus question. And what we have downstairs here is we have John in the specifier of the voice phrase, as we argued in the previous chapter, it's where agents go relative to verbs. They start inside the voice phrase by the voice phrase internal subject hypothesis. It gets its theta role in this position. This is, this is great, but this is not where this guy ends up. This DP ends up way up there at the top of the tree in the specifier position of the highest TP or the subject position of is likely. So this operation, this movement from this lowest position up to that very high position is called raising because you're, moving, you're raising the DP from one clause to another. Now we can indicate this with an arrow just like we indicated head movement with an arrow. We just, move, we just draw an arrow to indicate that it starts downstairs and it moves upstairs. Now, um, just a terminological point. Um, this operation that we just saw has three different names. It can be called NP movement, it can be called DP movement, and sometimes it's called A movement for argument movement. Um, all three of those names refer to exactly the same phenomenon that raising rule that we just saw.